I have found that building in more formative checks using quizzes has been one of the greatest ways to give more feedback to students. I can use a quick quiz during in-person learning as an activator or as a bell ringer to check their understanding or in a virtual learning environment to ensure the student understands the content that they've watched. Add in the fact that I can have it auto grade and give feedback to students about their learning while well, I'm also just being more efficient. Now there are two types of quizzes within Canvas and I'm not sure which one you've used more frequently, classic or new quizzes. While classic quizzes allow for you to create questions that are multiple choice and true false and fill in the blank and matching, new quizzes has some additional tools that maybe you haven't used. You can add a stimulus or a paragraph of text and add specific questions that go with that paragraph or a hotspot question where students need to click on a picture to identify a specific answer. For example, you could ask them to click where a specific state or country is on a map, or even ask where a specific bone is on a picture of a body. There is even a sorting tool within new quizzes that you could use. We will learn about requirements in a future video that we can use within modules, but even having a certain score on a quiz before a student can move on to the next item in a module. There are lots of ways we can use quizzes to work smarter, more efficiently, and ensure students are getting feedback about their learning. So let's look at some of these other tools that you could use within new quizzes. When you get started with quizzes, you are going to go to quizzes in your navigation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the upper right to create a new quiz by pushing the blue button that says plus quiz. When I do that, I'm going to have the option to pick a classic quiz or a new quiz. And let's say I wanted to show you what new quizzes looked like. You will be able to pick that and hit submit. Now new quizzes give you a few more options here and it looks a little bit different right when we start. So I went ahead and labeled this as our world religions and Israel test. Labeled it four points. It is a good idea to know how many questions you're going to have in here or if you're a standards-based course, uh, how many standards you're assessing. In this case, it is a standards-based quiz and it is only one standard. Uh, we have an assignment group that it's assigned to and we want to display this as points. Uh, you do not need to mess with any of these things as new quizzes is an external tool that we can use. And then I can choose if I want to allow an unlimited amount of times that they can do this quiz. Again, it's assigned to everyone. Elementary, you do not need this to sync to your student information system or infinite campus. If you're high school, middle school, and you do, that's what you would like to click here. Um, I already, down at the bottom, for those that are using this with the touching rubric for a standards-based scale, you will see something on that on the bottom. I will then hit save, not save, and publish because I haven't added all the questions yet. When I come into the new quiz, again, this is already created. I just want to show you what this will look like. Uh, we will see over here that I have a matching section. How I add these sections is I add the plus button here and pick the type of question that I would like. New quizzes has some more options than we see in our classic quizzes. So as you can add more directions up here, you can add those instructions. As I scroll down, I have a matching section here um, with descriptions of, or the vocab and then the words. As we go down, we see some multiple choice questions. Again, any of these you can edit by clicking on the pencil button. As we scroll down, we'll show you some of the other styles of questions. This is a hotspot area um, where you, they need to click on the map of where Islam emerged. Now they need to click within this blue area. Obviously, it did not emerge in the water, but you get the point. Sometimes it's a little trickier to design where the box is. Israel, then they have to click and we can change our shape. And that's the area. We can easily edit that area by clicking the pencil. And then you get to draw where the answer is. So you can either do a square, a circle, a polygon, etc. So, so I circle that area and they need to click in there and say done when I edit the question. As we scroll down more multiple choice, we have some free response areas where they need to type in the box. And this is an example of a stimulus. So we see a variety of content that's being measured within this more involved quiz. This is new quizzes and it gives you lots of tools to be able to do this. A few notes about grading. Uh, when this was out of a standards-based scale, this quiz, I got a 1.47 out of 4 because it's correlating how I did percentage-wise out of 4. If you're doing more of a traditional class, we have 35 points on this updated quiz, and I got 30 out of 35. So depending on how you want to do this, is this a formative task or is this a summative assessment in a standards-based course? You can decide as you do this. So we're going to dig into why this person received a 1.47 and how you should grade that with the speed grader. And I'm going to see how 
Steph Gerges Personal did on this quiz. You'll see that I had a 44%, 21 out of 47 points, and it took me two minutes to do the quiz, if that gives you any indication. Whenever you have a matching section, I just want you to know that it's all or nothing, but you can manually override that. So if you're going for efficiency, this probably isn't something you'd like to do. But I can easily kind of count to the greens and say how many points that we have here. Four, five. So I can put in six points here, and that will update at the bottom. As we kind of go on, we see that these were all correct. Anything that was a free response will need to be manually graded as well, so you may want to leave that out if it's something you want to just be efficient and give the feedback and you don't need to do anything. So I was correct with my hotspot of where Islam emerged, and I was very wrong where this is where Israel is, and I picked way over in Afghanistan. As we go on down, we have more questions. This one says, waiting for grade, where then I get to pick if this is correct or incorrect. It says two points, or I could just hit the check mark that this is correct, and it'll give me the full points. And I can scroll down looking for any of the other ones. I have no idea, so zero points for that. I put that out of five. Same thing for this one. When I get to the bottom, I'll hit update, now that I've manually graded those parts. And you'll see my new percentage that I have up here. If this is a standard space course, then this is where I would then use this to look at where this would land on the rubric. So this is a developing score for this. That would then override that score, and that is how we would have a 2 out of 4 with many points available on the quiz. Two other things to note, you have some additional tools up at the top for your quiz. In settings, you can decide if you want to shuffle your questions in here, or if you'd like students to answer one question at a time and allow them to go forward and backwards. I can also add a time limit of how long they will have to take this quiz. We see that right now we have set it so that they have multiple attempts and an unlimited amount, and they're going to keep the highest score. If we go into moderate, you will see those that are in the course and how long it took to take it. Again, let's say you didn't have unlimited times and you wanted to give Paula an extra time. We can edit some of these accommodations to change the time limit that maybe she would take or if we wanted to give her an additional attempt. All those are options within new quizzes if you're interested for those tools. You can decide between the two types of quizzes. You'll hit return to leave this area. And while you're in the quizzes area, you get to decide which kind of quiz is best for your class, whether that is, again, classic quizzes or new quizzes.